Too bad about Hickman, Jr. Guess this hits you pretty hard, huh? Well, hell, don't let it. Damn scumbags out there. They're just goddamn lucky I'm a desk jockey. If I was on the street, I'd whip their collective disrespectful butts. You know, Junior, this case is gonna generate a lot of paperwork, a lot of calling. You're just goddamn lucky you got me as your partner in this one. Damn lucky. Hal, have you heard from the coroner's office? Yeah, like you're their first priority, Junior. They're probably still in the kitchen. Besides that Nobles, he's the kind that likes you to come to him. Like we ain't got enough to do and go down to that garbage disposal. Hal, the lieutenant was pretty direct about the paperwork on this case. Hell, Junior, I already got our murder book set up. I might be afflicted with his damn diabetes, but I ain't lame. You just make sure you do your part. You're the one needing to write up the damn reports. I just gotta file them. Hal, do you always have to be so obnoxious? Hell, Junior, I'm on my third wife. Been 25 years on the floor, seen things no man should have to. What do you think? Yeah, I guess you're right, Hal. It's your very own desk. A memo from Lieutenant Block. You take a 3.1... The photograph taken of you and Hickman at the lake. The time you caught the big one. The photograph taken of you and Hickman at the lake, the time you caught the big one. Crash unit, barn speaking. Hello, this is Detective Carey over at Major Crimes Homicide. Is Lieutenant Varez there? No, uh, he's out in the field. How about I tell him you called? That would be fine. Thank you. You write up a 3.14 documenting the incidents relating to the alley. Alley Crime Scene Log Prepared by Officer Woodbury Hal, here's the Hickman Crime Scene Log. It was prepared by Officer Woodbury from the 77th. Hey, you're damn lucky you got me taking care of this book, Junior. Damn lucky. Here you go, Hal. Sure, Junior. You 
call the elevator. You select the basement as your Pressing the you select the lobby. Last night, the LAPD was shaken to its roots as Officer Robert Hickman, Police Officer of the Year 1992, was found brutally slain in a South Central neighborhood. Heading up the Hickman investigation is veteran homicide detective John Carey. Carey is best known for solving the murder of Lane Blair, the stunning actress featured in many of the action-adventure Straight Shots movies. Detective Carey has been unavailable for comment, and all requests for a formal statement from the department have been denied. However, we have been told by an unofficial source that the department is looking at this as a gang killing. As the investigation continues... Oh, oh wait, here comes Detective Carey now. Detective Carey, over here! Christy Bilden with KKAT. Detective Carey! No comment. Get that camera out of my face! What do you think you're doing? Hey! The physical abuse I have just experienced at the hands of Detective Carey is consistent with the treatment I've received from this entire department in trying to report the story. As a reporter and citizen of this city, I fear for our First Amendment rights. I'm Christy Bilden, reporting for KKAT. Entering the morgue always provides a sense of anticipation. Hi, Detective Carey. Hello, Sherry. I'd like to see Deputy Nobles. Show me your badge. You can go on in, Detective Carey. Hello, Detective Carey. Did I ever tell you what happened to Sam's girlfriend? I don't know. She left him after he tried to put a tag on her toe. <laughs> Go right in, Detective. Pick up Hickman's personal belongings envelope. You pick up Bobby Washington's personal belongings envelope. Hello, John. Hello, Sam. I'd like to ask you a few questions, Sam. You got a minute? You bet, John. Fire away. Sam, what can you tell me about the youth? Exactly what would you like to know, John? 
The boy's identification? Confirmed, and if so, by whom? The lucky Mini Mart owner confirmed the body as Bobby Washington, a local neighborhood boy. Has the boy's family been notified? Yes, and as I am sure you can imagine, the mother is near hysterics. Her name is Bernadette Washington, and she lives around the corner from the alley. The poor woman is so upset she can't yet bring herself to come down and claim the body, or the few small trinkets we found on the boy. Sam, do you have a preliminary on the boy's cause of death? I counted 17 points of entry, John. The boy was mowed down, execution style. Cause of death, gang violence if you want a personal opinion. Professional opinion, the youth was killed by gunshot wounds to the head and body. Has the boy's autopsy been performed yet? Yes, it was, John. I was able to pull three slugs out of the body. They look like 9mm. I've sent them over to SID for a ballistics check. The body is in cold storage, waiting for the family. Sam, what can you tell me about Bob? Why don't you begin at the beginning and begin by asking me the specifics? That way I won't miss any topic you might want to explore. Sam, have you completed Hickman's autopsy? What are your preliminary findings? The autopsy is complete. Beyond the surface evidence, I found a ruptured gastrointestinal tract. Fluids were sampled and I'm having toxicology tests run, including all known poisons. Have you made a determination on the cause of death? Sam, what killed Bob? There are no gunshot wounds on the body. There are, however, two injection marks on the upper left arm. The eyes have been glued shut with some form of epoxy, and there are burn marks to the face which look consistent with a cigarette burn. Then, of course, there's the missing index finger on the right hand. Torture, poison, maybe. Definitely not natural causes. Sam, will you go over the physical marks found on the body? Yes. There are two injection marks on the upper left arm, the burn marks to the face and upper torso, the epoxied eyes, the missing index finger, and then there are restraint marks. The restraint marks appear where you would most expect to find them, on the ankles and the wrists. At these points, I found fibrous material, all very consistent with what you would expect to find at a torture scene. Sam, what can you tell me about the body lividity? Lividity appears two places on the body, first and most notably on the buttocks. This would indicate to me that Hickman died while sitting and then was left in that position for a period of time. Or, once killed, he was moved to a sitting position and then left for a time. The second area of lividity appears on the upper back and shoulder area and I believe resulted from the time the body spent in the alley. Sam, do you have a preliminary back on the toxicology tests? Not yet, John, but I believe we'll find that Hickman died of poison, as opposed to, say, a heart attack. If Hickman was killed by poison, it could have been a slow and painful and, quite obviously, torturous death. There are also the burn marks on the face are a bit irregular, not perfectly round. This could be attributed to Hickman jerking or pulling away as his face and body were burned. All in all, a gruesome end. What about fibers or hairs, Sam? Were you able to find anything substantive? Actually, John, I was able to lift fibers from the areas of restraint. I imagine these will turn out to be rope of some kind. Of course, the body was covered in alley debris, so it is difficult to determine what extraneous materials will actually pertain to the killer or killers. Sam Nobles is a walking encyclopedia of information. You notate the state of affairs. I have released that to the family, John. It is good of you to take it to them.
Mrs. Washington would be most grateful if you took that to her, John. She's much too upset to make the trip down here. See ya, detective! You turn the knob and open the door, detective. Howdy, partner. You're here mighty early. Ain't scheduled to qualify till Wednesday. You fill the form out according to department specifications. You fill the form out according to department specifications. Qualification Form 13.5.0 Here you go, Bert. Hey now, partner. You colorblind or something? This here's the wrong form. Filled out and ready to go, Bert. Thank you, partner. Those are CCI Blazer 9mm 115 grain. Thank you, Bart. You pick up the headgear. Eh, yeah, she's a beauty, all right. Beretta 92 FS. Officers, officers, headgear on. All. No need to reload. Your Beretta 92F is fully loaded. Phase one. Ready on the run. Gun to low ready. Prepare for phase two. You load your Beretta. Phase two, ready on the right. Gun to low ready, prepare for phase three. You load your Beretta. Phase three, ready. Gun to low ready. Prepare for phase four. You load your Beretta. Phase four. Ready up. Gun to low ready. Prepare for phase five. You load your Beretta. Phase five. Ready on the right. Ready on the left. Attention. Gun to low ready. You load your Beretta. Phase six. Ready. Holster all firearms. You load your Beretta. The grip on the Beretta is a fine fit for your hand. That there was some shooting, cowboy. 15 per clip give you a fighting chance, eh, partner? Thank you, partner. <laughs>